Okay, so before we start the video that I made in November, I felt like I needed to maybe explain what a hotbed is. What you see here is two hotbeds. They're built with pallets and garbage plastic. The one I'm standing in front of right now, I made with feed sacks. I lined, I stapled feed sacks to the inside of the pallets. This one does not have any uh, fence stakes in it to hold it upright. It just has a two by four on both of the long sides to hold it together. And it's actually held together with twine from alfalfa. Hey, I wanted to show that you could build these without buying anything. But to all intents and purposes, what it is, is a massive compost pile that you put wood and sticks and leaves and food scraps and, and sawdust and then a little tiny bit of potting soil on the top. And what it does is the bacteria in the nitrogen that you put into it, in my case that's rabbit manure, but you can also use chicken manure, you can use watered down fish emulsion, you can use pretty much anything that is going to feed bacteria well. But once I have started to water it with rabbit manure tea or fish emulsion, or if it has enough manure in it, I can just water it with just plain old water, it starts to heat up and it actually will stay hot for about six weeks at blood temperature, which is 97 degrees. It'll go all the way up to 165 when you first start it, and then shortly after that, it will drop down to about blood temperature. see any steam today. Huh? I don't see any steam today. It sure steaming yesterday. Oh, green is coming up already. Where? Oh, there is. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, didn't my you just gosh. plant those day before yesterday? Yeah, I planted them day before yesterday. Oh, where did it go? There it is right there. Right there. That was day before yesterday. And what, what's the date? It's like November 16th, November 15th. That is awesome. What's that? Shiny. That is vermiculite. This batch I added vermiculite to. Okay, so what I'm worried about is how wet. I need to water it. Okay, so yesterday there were billowing clouds of steam coming off of this when I watered it. And two days ago I seeded it. We've already got seeds coming up. And right now it's about, it's in the 50s right now. It's pretty warm. Yeah, I can feel the heat. Just can you feel the heat? Yeah. Yeah, it's just because I'm kind of cold. No, though. I can feel it. Yeah. Can you guys see the green? Okay. So I have to put everything directly back over. If I'm not gonna water it, I need to put it back over because the cats will jump up, the turkeys will jump up. The reason there's both plastic and fabric the reason for that is because on frosty days you want the fabric and the, the plastic. On not frosty days you want just the plastic so you get as much sun as is possible. Okay, so that's just the hotbed with PVC hoops. I want to show that we're doing another one over here. Yep. This is the hotbed with uh, cow panels over the top and it's going to be a greenhouse with hotbeds. Okay, so it's about 11 o'clock in the morning and my hands are no longer numb. So I think it's warm enough to go ahead and take this off and see how our little starts are doing. Kind of careful how I do this because the turkeys and the cats like to jump on it the minute that I lift it off. So I can't like walk away. I'm going to try really hard to catch the steam this time. All right, can you see the steam? Oh, it's all in 
there. So anyway, there's our lettuce. It didn't freeze in the night. It's coming up pretty darn good. I'm going to put the shade cloth down and then put the plastic back up. All right, so having to switch things out like that, for a lot of you, maybe that seems like an awful lot of work, but if all this grows, that's enough uh, lettuces to feed my family and the rabbits while I'm getting the other hotbeds going. And one of the reasons this is important is, okay, so you have money for food, that's great. There's food in the grocery store, but what I've noticed lately when we have bought vegetables at the grocery store, Oh my gosh, I gotta show you this guy. Can you see him? Can't see anything. All right, what I have noticed is that when we're, we have bought um, vegetables at the grocery store is that the ounces are getting less and less. The last time we ate a bag of frozen vegetables, it wasn't enough for everybody to get even half a cup of vegetables out of one bag that's supposed to serve four people. So for me, having this means that I'm not paying higher prices for something that isn't actually going to feed my family. Hi, buddy. Move over. My understanding is that lettuce and carrots are your best bet this time of year. They're not daylight dependent the same way that other vegetables will be. Other vegetables they won't start germinating until after the, is it called the winter equinox? After the end of December, your light starts to increase again. And that's when most seeds will want to start germinating. They just won't thrive before that. But These are all my beautiful little birds that are asking to be fed once again. I've already fed them twice. But again, yeah, uh, last night was 14 degrees. And so, even though I fed them very generously, and then fed them again very generously, like large amounts both times, they are hungry. Because cold means calories being burned. And I've noticed, where is she? I don't see her. I don't think it was that duck. One of the ducks was actually shivering. And if in cold weather, your animals ever start to actually shiver, you know that you need to feed them more. They're not doing it to be selfish. They're not being <laughs> gluttons or any, anything like that. They just, if they're shivering, whether it's a goat or a pig or a rabbit or a duck, they're not getting enough to eat to keep their core temperature up and they will die on you. All right, that's what it looks like. I think the rabbit hutches are a little bit of an eyesore. I just don't have anywhere to put them. Guess what? What? I'm already done with math. You're already done and with math spell. and your spelling. Amazing. Alright, so it, this time of year you get bugs and things that come back unexpectedly and day before yesterday I had a yellow jacket fall down the sleeve of my jacket and I have found, we have found the best way to handle yellow jackets is to put wet clay on and then wrap it in saran wrap and it keeps things from rubbing against your sting. All right, I've got to get these guys covered back up with the frost cloth and the plastic. It is still very cold out here. I think it's still freezing. Is it above freezing? I can go look on the... And so I'm going to cover this up. It's cold enough that I'm worried about lifting it. It says it's freezing right now. That it's 30? 32. Okay, so I've already done a little work this morning. I stapled uh, feed sacks 
to the top and I'm going to take some cardboard and use the lathe pieces I cut yesterday to hold the cardboard. Really all we're trying to do is keep cold wind from blowing through the slats of the pallets and up into the bed because those slats, those holes, go all the way up into the bed. Now I did the same thing when we lived in Oklahoma. Now I had all that cardboard up so that the wind wasn't blowing straight through the bed during the coldest months. And um, so you see, it looks just fine. All this is is a windbreak, a wind barrier. I'm making sure that the the bags and the cardboard are pointing away from the incoming wind, which is southwest for us. So I'm lapping the cardboard underneath the previous piece so the wind doesn't blow up into the cardboard. Okay, that's pretty much good enough. Remember, all we're trying to do is keep that prevailing wind from getting into those slats and up into the bed. I'm gonna go ahead, it's pretty warm outside, so I'm gonna lift up the frost cloth. Try and show this to you guys. The light out here is kinda wonky, so I'm not sure how well you can see. And the frost cloth was frozen to the frame earlier. So, I don't know if you'll be able to see everything. Pretty good. All right, we're gonna see. I, I watered it a week ago, three days ago. And they looked much big, much big. Oh, there we go. I think I think we're getting some updraft under the plastic. That's what I think. had a lot of really bad wind and you can see frost on the plastic on the inside so I just feel like these guys are just hanging in there I don't think I'm gonna be able to give it a good enough like heave-ho shot 
until we get them until we get some in the greenhouse this greenhouse where it will just have more protection yeah yeah Greenhouse plastic in the garage under the window. In the greenhouse garbage can. The greenhouse plastic garbage can in the garage under the window. Now this Alright. Just because something is ugly doesn't mean it doesn't work. I'm going to check this again today. I'd like to water it today. I don't know if I'll be able to get to that. This is what it looks like. I don't think they're growing very fast. There's not a whole lot of sunlight in here. What it looks like. If I can keep it alive, see there's the spot over in that corner where I have a log underneath so there's no heat. But um, if I can keep it alive and grown slow, that'd be pretty cool. All right, hi guys. So I wanted to walk through the process and the books and the thinking that I'm going through this time of year. This is the first year that I have tried to plant in winter. When it's legitimately winter, I planted this garden, I believe on like November 5th or 10th. I have to go back and look at the footage. But um, where I got those planting dates was from this book, The Winter Harvest Handbook, and it's by Elliot Coleman. I have other books that I researched for the hotbeds. The other books that I researched for the hotbeds um, were Hotbeds by Jack First, and then Stand Up and Garden by Mary Moss Sprague, I think is how you say her name. Um, and then also David the Goods, uh, Compost Everything. Those were books that I kind of mushed together to do the way that I do. But this is the one I'm using right now. I pretty much have the hotbeds down. I just don't have the planting seasons, the timing of when you plant things and where you plant things. <clears throat> so, so far they have two, three inches of growth on them in some spots. One spot that's very bare, I keep trying to figure out why it's bare and I finally remembered why. It's because in that particular spot, I put a log in pretty close to the surface and logs don't break down quickly. The sawdust that's surrounded by rabbit manure, the goat bedding, all of that stuff is breaking down from bacteria breaking it down and it's creating heat. But if you have a big log, <laughs> that log's not breaking down very fast and so it's not creating heat. So it would have been much better if I'd put that log in the low down, a couple of feet down in the bed, deep in the bed, rather than on the surface because it's it's not creating any heat, it's not warm enough to get those babies to germinate, and thus, even though I've replanted in that spot twice now, so three times total, um, nothing's coming up in that spot. But everything is alive. Everything that did come up is alive. Uh, um, as I water it, what's happening is, is that rabbit manure is getting um, slightly uh, what's the word? Slightly saturated with water and then the bacteria from the manure can kind of spread a little bit into the carbon and then the bacteria starts to eat that and it's heating up constantly. If I were to stop watering that um, hotbed, <clears throat> it would all stop because a very dry compost pile doesn't do anything. And it is, to all intents and purposes, just a really big compost pile. So, one of the things I wanted to point out is that this is my first time doing it in November. I intend to plant again in December, but that bed I'm going to put into the new uh, greenhouse that I built over the top of two hotbeds. I wanna show that you can have a hotbed garden that's a greenhouse so that you can get into it and be have extra protection 
and that's a really fun project, but I haven't done it yet because, again, I have COVID. <clears throat> I can't go anywhere. I can't go get my peat moss. I ran out of peat moss with this last hotbed that I just planted. And um, I also haven't figured out how to put the doors in yet. Really haven't figured that out. I can't spend a lot of time outside right now. So again, all the gardens are just kind of waiting with bated breath for me to come back out. We'll see what survives. We'll see what doesn't survive. But I'm really excited about the process. So highly recommend this. I will put the link to this and the link to the other books that I told you about in the description through Amazon. Um, I personally try not to buy things through Amazon, but I, I, <laughs> I know it's the easiest place to get it, so I'll put it there. And it is an affiliate link, so I'm totally two-faced by doing that. But, um, yeah. I have my own books. Those are on Etsy. They're on my Etsy store. I have um, poultry goat, pig, and rabbit for ebooks. Um, they print up really easy, really nice and easy. You fit two to a page, fit to page, and they print up really nice. I think they're very pretty and super fun. Um, I also have a little one, sh one or two sheet, maybe three sheet uh, PDF on how I make my hotbeds. It's definitely a work in progress. It's my second draft and it, it, I would really like to do all of my books up differently. I just, I'm growing food year round and I can't do all the things in one lifetime. So if you're interested in those things, my own books are on my Etsy store. You just download them as a PDF and then print them out. All right, we've got all the two by two by eights and sixes and everything in. And okay, be careful not to kill any trees because it's sharp. We're gonna put the tin in. This is from a salvaged uh, calf shed from my father-in-law. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in. It goes on the inside, which is why it doesn't matter that some of this might be pressure treated. Okay, you cannot turn, so get down and figure out how, where would you need to be standing in order to be able to get this in. This is my fall lettuce garden and let and fall cucumber. Huh? Why do I keep hurting myself? I don't know. I just stubbed three of my toes on the El Camino tire. I'm sorry. Do not come over here, turkey. I don't want you on this. Okay, I'm trying to reposition this so that it... So, this is lettuce and then the others are cucumbers. But I've got to... I gotta pull this off so that I can put it back over so that the turkeys will stay out of it. So, big beautiful butterhead lettuces. 